The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant says it has resumed the process of removing spent fuel from one of the damaged reactor buildings. Building number four had been idle since last Wednesday. That's when an alarm suddenly sounded on a large crane removing a cask containing fuel assemblies. Tokyo Electric Power Company engineers found that a worker had mistakenly operated the crane without releasing an auxiliary brake. The removal work resumed at noon on Sunday. This was the first suspension of the operation since TEPCO engineers started removing fuel units from the pool in the building last November. TEPCO officials say the process is the first important step in decommissioning the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. They plan to finish the task by the end of this year. A test run of a key water treatment system at the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant has been hit by a series of troubles. Tokyo Electric Power Company officials said it had temporarily suspended the system's sole working line on Sunday morning to look into the cause. TEPCO managers say the Advanced Liquid Processing System, or ALPS, is capable of removing almost all nuclear materials from radioactive water at the plant. But a pump that takes contaminated water from storage tanks was found to have a lower flow rate than usual. Workers washed the pump on Saturday night but could not bring the intake flow back to normal. It recovered after they removed sediment in the pump. Treatment of the water then resumed. The utility is hoping to process all the contaminated water in storage tanks by the end of March 2015 but has no prospective date for when ALPS will be back in full operation. Currently, only one of the three lines has been operating. I want to talk about something a little bit more earthly, something a little bit closer to home, that you've been outspoken about as well, which is Fukushima and the nuclear crisis in Japan. Um, there's so much disinformation out there. How, what is the severity of the crisis right now as you see it? The crisis is much more severe than we're led to believe. Documents have been coming out over the last two years showing how the utility and the government deliberately suppressed vital information. Did you know that even as the accident was progressing and they said, don't worry, everything's under control, they were contemplating evacuating Tokyo. Evacuating Tokyo. I mean, it's mind-boggling, but that's how severe the accident was. Now, right now, we have three melted reactors. It'll take 40 years, by their estimate, to clean up this disastrous accident, and it could start again anytime soon. A small earthquake could tip it over, and the accident starts all over again. I mean, that's, it, it really is in, insanity, <laughs> nuclear, nuclear insanity, really. Like I said before, though, like, and, and as you mentioned, you know, that, that sounds like a conservative estimate, 40 years uh, for the cleanup. There's so many conflicting reports that are coming out. The seafood safety, oh, no, it's not. The radiation is going to hit the West Coast, and other scientists will disagree. What will be the, the long-term impacts? Is this an ever, everlasting crisis? It's not an everlasting crisis, but there are dead zones. Dead zones are on the reactor. That'll be dead zones for decades to come. And all of us have a piece of Fukushima in you. I can take a ganglia counter right to your body and detect some of the radiation from the reactor. However, it's minimal. So don't think that everything is going to be radioactive here in the United States. It's not that way. Checks out. Okay, sir, you're free to go. Good, because I got a hot date tonight. Hot date. Dinner with Fred. Dinner alone. Watching TV alone. All right. I'm going to sit at home and ogle the ladies in the Victoria's Secret catalog. See his catalog. Now, would you unhook this already, please? I don't deserve this kind of shabby treatment. Food you can eat. However, we have to monitor the food very carefully because we do know that radioactive cesium with a half-life of about 30 years leaked into the ocean and it's water soluble and it did get into the fish and sea life around Fukushima. And the best of the rest of the news to a story that tragically just won't go away, the Fukushima nuclear crisis. Radioactive fish are now swimming in U.S. waters. 
Scientists have, for the first time, discovered bluefin tuna that were contaminated by the Fukushima nuclear crisis in Japan last year, swimming off the coast of California. Radioactive cesium, ten times above the normal level, was found in the fish, though health officials say the levels are too low to be considered a health threat. Then again, no amount of radiation is good for you. But the government does monitor these things, and so far as we know, the food supply is safe. Well, I mean, it. it I hope so. <laughs> I hope that we can that we can eat this food. And um, I did want to ask you, you know, given that the crisis, uh, like you said, another minor earthquake could could trigger another meltdown, another tipping point. Exactly. Sorry. And and this, there's so many different reactors all over the world. There's so many here in the United States. Do you think that as a result of Fukushima, you know, what we've learned from Chernobyl? that in the future will eventually do away with nuclear energy. Do you see us moving beyond that? Well, Germany has already thrown in the towel. Germany says, N never again. They saw what happened at Fukushima. A disaster in Germany could literally wipe out Germany a as a nation. And so they're phasing out nuclear entirely. Switzerland follows suit. Italy is sort of teetering right now. And even Japan is teetering on the, on the brink. They have a national debate as to whether or not to go nuclear or not. See, after World War II, Japan made the Faustian bargain. Faust was the legendary figure who sold his soul to the devil for unlimited power. That's the Faustian bargain, bargain that Japan made after the war. And now they're going to have to reanalyze whether it's worth it to sell your soul to the Mike devil. Gunderson, he joins us live from Tampa, Florida. He's the chief engineer at Fairwinds Energy Associates, is an energy consulting company. He is also a former executive in nuclear industry. Thank you so much for being with us. I'm curious to know when we see the pictures out of the area around Fukushima, what does the future look like for them? How long will it be before things are truly back to normal? Well, I think for the people within maybe 20 miles, they'll never get back to normal. Mm. You know, you'll see people walking around with these little handheld radiation detectors, and they're not really measuring the worst of the radiation. What we're finding are very, very small microscopic particles that are lodging in people's lungs. And the Japanese government is not taking that exposure into effect. Uh, the health consequences uh, within 20 kilometers and 30 kilometers out are really significant and will be for decades. So do you think the Japanese authorities are moving too quickly and trying to move in people to some of the outlying neighborhoods of the Fukushima plant? Absolutely. You know, they're really forcing them to move in because they're taking away the, the money that they have been receiving to live remotely. And the only way they can continue to be on a stipend is to come back into that radiation. So it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. It's uncomfortable to live far away. On the other hand, it's worse to be in a high radiation area. So when you look at this disaster, what do you think other nuclear plants around the world have learned from this? Well, there's been a lot of lessons learned. Unfortunately, most of the changes are not being implemented. You know, we learned about this huge wave that can knock out the cooling systems of the plant. There's plants in the United States that have that same problem, but yet we have given those power plants as long as 10 years to make the required fixes. The emergency planning was proven to be a joke, and yet we've got Indian Point, which is only 20 miles from New York City, which continues to operate. So while we know the problems, we're really not getting to the meat of solving them. North Korea has reacted sharply to the UN Security Council's condemnation of its recent ballistic missile launch. Pyongyang says it would not rule out a new form of nuclear test. North Korea's foreign ministry issued a statement on Sunday. It said the council's move is a provocative act that unjustly condemns the North's rocket launching drills. 
The statement says these were self-defensive drills aimed at dealing with the United States' increasingly hostile policy towards the North. The ministry added that if the United States condemns North Korea's rocket launching drills again, the North will not rule out conducting a new form of nuclear test. The statement may be referring to a test using highly enriched uranium instead of plutonium. Diplomatic sources told NHK that North Korea has warned its fishing and cargo ships in the Sea of Japan to be on the alert for three days starting on Sunday. The sources add that the North has not notified any other country. The South Korean military has deployed Aegis-equipped ships in the area to prepare for possible missile launches. Robots are making work more efficient in factories, hospitals, labs. Many perform their tasks with only one arm. But now Japanese companies are developing some with two arms. And they're applying the technology in fields where robots have never been used before. The life science industry was once far behind in automation because the work involved complicated procedures that could only be done by hand. But now machines are doing the jobs. Dr. Toru Natsume of the National Institute of Advanced Industrial Science and Technology has introduced a dual arm robot to his lab. This robot is transferring fluid into a tube. A task called pipetting The robot holds a plunger in one hand and uses the other to inject a precise amount of solution. Another task. Cells cultured in a container must be scraped off completely at a stroke by applying steady pressure with a spatula. Doing the job with a single arm robot would require another piece of equipment to rotate the container. Such peripherals are not needed for a dual arm robot, as it can utilize all the tools that humans use. This dramatically reduces the time and cost for the entire operation. The advantage of dual arm robots is their high degree of accuracy. For example, in pipetting, human workers cannot maintain consistency in liquid transfers, no matter how skillful they are. By contrast, Dual arm robots can perform the job with five to ten times greater accuracy. By using the robots, research that used to take 15 years can be done in one year. This is a huge achievement. This technology will accelerate advances in life sciences even further. Today, global manufacturing trends are shifting from high-speed, high-volume production of the same item to high variety, low volume production with different procedures and elements according to product. To meet these changing needs, this robotics company is developing an autonomous dual arm robot that can think and act for itself. All humans have to do is give it objects and task scenarios. Neither training nor programming is required. The company's robot incorporates two technologies. One consists of visual sensors installed at the top and on both arms that can recognize the location and direction of an object. The other is a cylinder-shaped sensor that can detect repulsion forces exerted on the arms. This force sensor can distinguish a slight difference between concavity and convexity by touching an object while measuring the repulsion force. Our product lineup is expanding to meet changing customer needs. These kinds of dual arm robots will definitely play an important role in high variety, low volume production. Dual arm robots will free people from monotonous tasks and lead us to be more creative in business. In the meantime, we may begin to wonder what work is left for humans to do.